This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castiles. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our guest, William Bendix, a special visitor, Herbert Marshall, Jimmy Cash, the Swan Tet, and Felix Mills and his orchestra. And now meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, breakfast is just over at the Burns house, and George is about to leave for the office. Oh, George, I don't think you ought to go to the office today. You don't look well. Oh, I'm all right. A little tired. I, I worked late last night. No, darling, it's more than that. You weak. Why, at breakfast, you had to hit your boiled egg four times to crack it. <laughs> I did, huh? Yeah. And when you're feeling your usual robust self, you only have to hit it three times. <laughs> Yeah, before I was married, I could crack them with my bare hands. Well, I better get started for the office. No, dear. What you need is rest and nourishment. Now, you lie down while I go get a chicken and milk it for you. You're gonna milk the chicken? I, I would cream it, but all I have is milk. <laughs> Say, cream chicken... <clears throat> Sounds great, but I'd rather get to the office. No, there. darling. You're going to rest right here in this den. Shall I bring down the flower pajamas I gave you for Christmas? Oh, don't bother. They don't look good on me. Oh, I think they're very becoming. Why, across the hips, the flowers look like they're just ready to burst into bloom. Ah, <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, dear company. I'll close the door so nothing will disturb you. Greetings, dear lady. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bolingbroke. Well, how is your school of culture and dramatic art coming along? Alas, it no longer exists. My landlady cast me forth from my lodgings. Oh, too bad. Yes, and one cannot teach culture on a park bench. Policemen and pigeons spoil the mood. <laughs> Wait, I have an idea. Why couldn't you use my house for your culture school? Who knows, it might become as famous as the Louvre, the Acropolis, the Palladium. That's a splendid idea. Ah, but there is an insect in the ointment of culture, your husband. For some obscure reason, he considers me a bum. Oh, well, don't worry. We'll only hold classes while George is at the office. Now, you get whatever you need for the culture school, and I'll get rid of my husband. Good luck to you, Mrs. Burns. And good riddance to your husband. Why, George, haven't you gone to work yet? Huh? Let me see your tongue. Ah. Well, it looks fine, not a bit bloodshot. <laughs> but, Gracie, a minute ago you said... Uh, put on your coat while I answer the door. Yes? Excuse me, lady, but is this where the Gilhulies live? No. Now, I'm sorry, you have the wrong address. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Who was that? I don't know, but he looked kind of familiar. Well, goodbye, George. Hurry to the office. Do you really think I ought to go? I feel kind of dizzy. Maybe I've got something. Mm, my father never missed a day's work in his life. He had lots of things to make him dizzy. I know, I married one of them. <laughs> Hi, folks. Oh, hello, Bill. You leaving, George? I guess so. Bill, do you think I look my usual self this morning? Well, no, George, you don't. See, Gracie? You look good. <laughs> Goodbye, funny man. Oh, Bill, now that George is gone, I can tell you the wonderful news. I, I didn't want George to find out about it, so you're the first one I'm telling. Why, Gracie, you you're going to have a baby. I am? That's better news than I have for you. Well, when do you think it'll be? Well, well wait a minute, Gracie. Isn't that what you were going to tell me? Oh, no. Oh. Well, uh, what is the news, Gracie? Well, Nigel Bolingbroke and I are opening a school of drama and culture. Oh, really? Well, say, maybe I could teach diction. Oh, uh, are you good at that? Well, Grace, I don't want to brag, but just yesterday, one of the biggest radio announcers in this town came to me to help him with his voice. Really? Oh, yeah, he said, um... Bill, old friend, my sponsor is unhappy. 
show me how you say swam. The new white floating soap is for soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face for bathing the baby. And the soap for your dishes and light laundry. Show me that, Bill. Oh, the poor man. Did you help him? Well, when I got through with him, he was talking like this. Swan is a great wartime buy. <laughs> when you wash the dishes with a swan, you get heaps of suds. Suds so gentle, so mild, uh, you don't have to worry about rough uh, red dish panty hands. <laughs> So he talked like that on his program and the sponsor was happy, huh? No, the sponsor fired him. He was supposed to sell coffee. <laughs> well, now, now, Bill, I'm afraid you won't do as a teacher. Well, okay, Gracie. Oh, by the way, before I go, do you know the Gilhoolies in this neighborhood? Well, now, that's funny. There was another man here asking for them. Well, that must have been William Bendix. He's trying to locate these friends of his from Brooklyn. William Bendix, the, the movie star? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, and I practically slammed the door in his face. Oh, the poor man. From the looks of his face, it's had lots of doors slammed on it. <laughs> well, you know, Gracie, Bendix is really a swell guy. I worked with him in the picture, Wake Island. You remember that big, dumb Marine? Yeah, I, I thought you were very good. <laughs> No, he, he was the big dumb Marine. Oh, oh, yes. Say, Bill, wouldn't William Bendix be a wonderful guinea pig for our culture school? Well, what do you mean? Well, if we could make a suave, sophisticated, leading man out of him, we'd be famous. You'd be magicians. <laughs> he doesn't go for that culture stuff, Gracie. Well, uh, maybe I can get him interested. Oh, hey, excuse me, Bill. Look, uh, lady, are you sure you don't know where the Gilhoolies live? I'm just dying to talk to somebody from Brooklyn. Well, come right in, Mr. Bendix. You mean you're from Brooklyn? Well, they call me Green Purse Gracie. <laughs> well, hallelujah! Let's pause right here. We'll return to the Burns and Allen Show in a moment. To find out more about old-time radio, old-time video, and the pleasures of listening to audiobooks, visit the Audiobook Club website, www.audiobookclub.com, where you can get four audiobooks for just one penny. MediaBay.com And now, let's rejoin the Burns and Allen Show with George and Gracie's special guest, William Bendix. Gracie believes that William Bendix is the ideal pupil for her school of drama and culture. So she has lured him into the house by pretending to be from Brooklyn. Gee, lady, it sure is great to meet somebody from Brooklyn. Oh, yes, the motherland. Yeah. Oh, such a lovely place with its trees and its flowers and its little flat bushes. Yeah, you said a kissiful lady. What memories? Eating weenies and crowd from a push cart. While the new moon caresses the Navy Yard. Oh. <laughs> you make it sound like poetry, Mr. Bendix. Oh, I don't take no credit. Brooklyn brings out the poet in anybody that's human. Uh, and you are, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, enough about Brooklyn. Let's talk about you, Mr. Bendix. Okay, that's an interesting subject. Um, how does it feel to be such a flop in pictures? Hmm? Oh, I ain't doing so bad. Well, the folks back home are disappointed in your playing a cab driver. They, they'd rather see you as Romeo or Madame Curie. Oh, I couldn't play them. They was foreigners. Well, just the same. The home folks feel that you've let them down. And they don't feel that way about Ronald Coleman. Gee, is he from Brooklyn? One of the oldest families. Well, that's funny. I never run into him in none of the saloons. And Brooklyn is mighty proud of Walter Pigeon. Him too? Sure. You don't say. You see, Mr. Coleman and Mr. Pigeon are successful because they're cultured Brooklyn gentlemen. Yeah. They make out pretty good with the dames too, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, are you interested in women? Oh, yeah, they could very easily become a hobby with me. <laughs> well. Uh, why do you suppose Charles Boyer always gets the girls? 
politics? No, because he's a cultured Brooklyn gentleman. I thought he was French. That's right, from the French Quarter of Brooklyn. <laughs> the left bank. The left bank? Yeah. You know, the other side of the Canarsie Swamp. Oh, yeah. A lovely spot. Mm. You could get the girls, too, if you'd brush up on culture. Now, uh, for instance, I'll bet you blow on your soup. Well, sure, but strictly proper, I never blow on it toward me. <laughs> Ronald Coleman doesn't blow on his soup at all. Fans it with his bread, huh? Mr. Bendick, you do need culture. Wouldn't you like to become a gentleman? Lady, I'm a gentleman to the tip of my toes. Well, maybe, but from there up, you need plenty of work. I do, huh? Yeah. Now, for example, what would you do at a party if a young lady held out her hand to you? I guess I'd bite it. <laughs> Ronald Coleman would kiss it. Well, he ain't as lonesome as I've been. Yeah, uh, you, you better enroll in culture school right away. Okay, I'll give it a try. Where is this seat of higher learning? You're sitting on it. This is the school? Yep. We have a course that's guaranteed to make the average man a gentleman in a week. Well, do you think you can make me a gentleman in a week? Well, it might take a little longer, but don't worry, the months will fly by. Well. Come in. She's ideal, lady. Oh, come in, Dean Bolingbroke. I want you to meet our student, William Bendick. Well, well, our first sucker, a uh, seeker after knowledge. Uh, hiya, Dean. Do you think you can make me a Ronald Coleman? Hey, boy, we shall plant in you the flower of culture. It's up to you to make it bloom. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll bloom beautifully in Mr. Bendix. He's a perfect pot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And now, my dear scholar, uh, uh, shall we discuss that little matter of... Uh, the uh, uh, enrollment fee, shall we? <laughs> oh, uh, you mean dough? Yes, yes, uh, dough, as you so delightfully put it. <laughs> uh, naturally, you want to enroll for all our courses. Oh, sure, I'll take everything you got. It's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, just count your money slowly into my palm. Okay. Ten. For elocution. Twenty. For rhetoric. Twenty-five. For poise. Thirty. For elocution. You said that. Uh, uh, that was compound elocution. This is complex. Oh, well. I guess that's the bundle. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Here's a book I didn't see. You may keep that for your honesty. Oh, uh, <laughs> thanks, Dean. Not at all. You show great promise, dear pupil. I predict that you will make the Hall of Fame. And I didn't make a bad haul myself. <laughs> uh, farewell, friends. Oh, no, wait, Mr. Bolingbroke. How about Mr. Bendix's cultural lesson? Well, there isn't time today. If your husband comes home and catches us running this culture school, he'll skin us alive. Oh, dear, that's right. And we haven't got the skin to spare like he has. <laughs> How true. Oh, Mr. Bendix, you better come back tomorrow. Goodbye. Well, gee whiz, I paid my dough. I want a lesson. Uh, Mrs. Burns, I suggest we step into the next room and hold a faculty meeting. Excuse us, Mr. Bendix. Gee, if the folks back in Flatbush could only see me now. Me in a culture school. Hello. Hello. Is aren't you William Bendix? Yeah, why? Oh, nothing. I'm a little surprised to see you here. Well, you look a little out of place yourself. <laughs> out of place? I live here. Gee. She ain't made you much like Ronald Coleman. She? Yeah, the little dame, your daughter. <laughs> she happens to be my wife. Oh, well, well, I'm your new student. Student? Look, where is my wife? She's in there. Well, excuse me. Why, George, you're not supposed to be home this early. I mean, uh, hello, dear. Bolingbroke, what are you doing here? Leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> Gracie, what's William Bendix doing in the living room? He says he's a student here. Is, is that all, all he told you? Yes. If he's a student, who's his teacher? You. 
Me? What do I teach them? Singing. Oh, stop. Oh, it's true, darling. You've been the talk of Hollywood since you sang at that party the other night. Well, I... I did kind of make a hit, didn't I? Oh, yes, dear. When you sang the desert song, you were so believable. All the sand and gravel of the desert seemed to be right in your throat. Gee. My desert is calling. Oh, come back to me. Oh, oh. oh my sheep. So that's why Bendix is here. Why don't you teach him to sing? Sure. You know, Gracie, when I walked in here, I half expected you to make up some kind of a lie. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you're cute. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going in to show Bendix how I sing. Oh, no, you, you can't, dear. You see, when you sang the desert song just now, you didn't sound right. The, the gold was missing from your voice. No gold at all? Well, it was tarnished. <laughs> some of the notes you sang were sort of green. Gee, I, I thought I sounded swell. My desert is calling. No, no, oh, I'm sorry, well, maybe, dear. Uh... <laughs> but uh, I'm very sensitive to the quality of your voice. When it's bell-like tones are perfect, my whole body quivers. And it didn't quiver then? No, only my left leg twitched a little. <laughs> you mean, you mean I'm slipping? No, I'm sure it's nothing permanent. Uh, just this morning you were superb when you sang in the shower. Oh, I love the way you kept tuned to the rhythm of the drum beat. What drum beats? The water bouncing off your stomach. <laughs> oh, that. Showers seem to help your voice. Why don't you go up and take another shower now? A nice long one. But, sweetheart. Oh, please, George. Wash yourself back into shape and then show Mr. Bendix how you sing. Well, okay. I want him to hear me at my best. Uh, just tell him I won't be long. All right, dear. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I left you so long, Mr. Bendix, but... My husband is home now, and I'll have to give you your culture lesson tomorrow. Goodbye. But, gee, lady, I want to go out stepping tonight. Couldn't you just slip me enough culture to get anyhow an ugly dame? Well, uh, maybe a short lesson, just long enough for a shower. What's that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Now, we'll pretend that we're Hollywood's two most charming and sophisticated personalities. Uh, you'll be Ronald Coleman, and I'll just be myself. Okay. Now, you're serving me tea, and you just say whatever you think Mr. Coleman would say. All right. Uh, 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 a saucer of tea, your madam ship? Mm, cheerio. Lemon? Quite. Trumpet? No, just squeeze it. A uh, spoon? Oh, let's have our tea first. Pip, pip. Been hunting today, Ronald? Constant. How was the hunt? It stunk. You, um, you didn't catch a fox? No, they wasn't fighting. Oh, how dreadful. Beastly. Well, how am I doing? Oh, you were wonderful. If it wasn't for a few things like your face, I'd have sworn you were Ronald Coleman. Hiya, Gracie. Uh, hello, Bill. Bendix, are you still here? Mr. Goodwin, you are now looking at the Bendix that all the women want. Well, you are built a little like a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> One more dirty crack and I'll kick your teeth in. Oh, Mr. Bendix, hmm? remember your culture. You should say, One more uncouth remark and I'll kick your teeth in. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see, Goodwin, this little lady has molded me into a Ronald Coleman. Really? It doesn't show. Oh, Bill, I think he definitely looks molded. Gracie, <laughs> will you bring me a towel? Oh, George is out of the shower. You boys better leave. Uh, Mr. Bendix, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye. Well, Goodwin, now that I'm cultured, I ought to get plenty of things. Now, now look, Bendix, if you want to get somewhere with the women, listen to me. Now, let's say that you have a beautiful woman in your home. Well, that's already further than I ever got before. <laughs> well, now, now, first you want to show her that nothing's too good for her, oh. you see. So you open the bar and you tell her to help herself. Yeah, go on. Yeah, her eyes will light up and she'll say, Oh, Mr. Bendix, for me, that whole bar of swans? Bar of what? A swan. That's the new white floating soap. Women are crazy about swan because it's four soaps in one. Great for their hands and face or for bathing the baby, and tops for dishes and light laundry. 
Swan is four swell soaps in one, a great wartime buy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me I can get beautiful dames with swan soap? For sure. Holy smoke, and I've been wasting that stuff taking a bath with it. Well, no, Bill, that's not wasting it. A swan bath's wonderful. Even babies love those mildest May swan suds. Swan's pure as fine Castile. To say if swan is that mild, that pure, you couldn't ask for a better soap for your complexion. Well, yeah, 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 but, but, but what about this beautiful dame I got in my home? Yeah. She's standing there clutching a bar of soap. Now, now, <laughs> what, uh... What now? Well, yeah. now you, you take her in your arms, Bill, and you squeeze her. <laughs> yeah. One little squeeze, does it? Uh... The bar of swan breaks in two. <laughs> huh? And you put... Half in the bathroom for your hands and face tub or shower, and half in the kitchen for your dishes and light laundry. Then you send the dame home. Send her home? Oh, my goodness. Haven't you boys gone yet? Well, we were just... Well, uh, it's too late now. My husband's on his way down to give you a singing lesson. Singing lesson? But Ronald Coleman doesn't sing. But think how many more women you'll attract if you talk like Coleman and sing like Sinatra. Gee. Oh, well, you can be a new and different Sinatra. The microphone can lean on you. Gracie, George is giving singing lessons? Oh, yes. Why, if it weren't for him, Frank Sinatra wouldn't be where he is today. George? Sure, he found an apartment for him. Well, Bernix, uh, I'm ready for your singing lesson. Now sit down and I'll show you how you'll sound after five or six years of hard study. I ain't got nobody. Nobody cares for me. Including me. Goodbye, George. <laughs> I'm so sad and lonely, baby. Won't somebody take a chance with me? But who to do? <gasps> oh, you see, see how he closes his eyes, Mr. Bendix. Yeah, he's closing the wrong thing. I'll sing sweet love songs all the time. If you'd be my baby, baby, then you'd be mine. Ah, I ain't got nobody, babe. And nobody, nobody, nobody cares for me. Well, Mr. Bendix, when you learn to sing like that, you'll get plenty of women. Lady, the dames I could get with a voice like that, I wouldn't want. So long. <laughs> you said for about ten years. George and Gracie will be right back, so I've only a few seconds to remind you that whether you're a pin-up girl or a grandmother, your complexion deserves the purest, mildest soap that money can buy. You want a soap that's pure as fine Castile's. You want swan. You want a soap that's so mild, it's kind to even a baby's tender skin. Again, you want swan. Yes, and you want a soap that'll give you a thick, rich lather at the touch of a hand. So, sister, you really want swan. And when you get swan, remember, it's also great for the baby and perfect for dishes and light laundry. So put your wartime pennies on a four-time winner, the new white floating soap, Swan. Well, good night, sir. Our guest tonight, William Bendix, is now heard in his own radio program, The Life of Riley. His next motion picture will be the Harry H. Remember George Burns and Gracie Allen next Tuesday night. And now, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I swan, how about you? Good night, everyone. <laughs>